I was in Prague the other day. I was in Prague and I was in a bar having a coffee. Everything was good. Then I look at the other end of the restaurant and there's some guy waving at me like this. So I looked around. I said, oh, he thinks I'm, he knows me. So I, I waved back to him. So, like, it's not me. So he waved back at me and he, he did that. And he went back to his business. So what happened, what, what happened at this restaurant in, in Prague, beautiful Prague? So what happened is that this man thought I was a lookalike. I thought I, he wa I was a double and he thought I was a doppelganger, which is all the same thing, by the way. So who in the room here has experienced, you know, being taken for someone else or talking to someone who was somebody else? Anyone? Oh, that's a good number. So I can't finish my talk right now. <laughs> so what is a lookalike? A lookalike is a person that looks like another person, but is not related. That's the key. There's a confusion. So anyone who looks like another, another person as much as to confound him, and it, it happened to me a few minutes ago, I was looking at someone working here, and I thought it was Adrian, one of the men working here, so, but he looked at me in a strange way. I said, okay, that's not him. And he wasn't dressed the same, in the same way either. So I'm a photographer, I'm an artist, and I've been obsessed for many, many, many years about likeness. People who look the same. I walk in the street and I see people and I say, ah, he looks like somebody else. And we were in the restaurant the other day and there were two lookalikes at my table. So it's, a, it's an obsession. And I guess being obsessed sometimes can be good and sometimes it can be bad. So uh, you'll be the judge of that. So this obsession, it gave me an ID. I had this ID one time, I say, well, these lookalikes, there's something to it. So I had this ID, and the ID was to find two people that look the same, two identical persons. Well, my ID first was identical person, like twins, but not related. So I would find them, and I would bring them in the studio, and I would make a photo of them. And as an artist, you have those dreams, the impossible dreams, you'll say, or I would say crazy dreams. So I thought that when they would come in the studio and they would look at each other and they would, you know, look at the other person that's like them but not them, they would be in a state of shock. They would be flabbergasted, as we say in English, and they would be in such a mood that I would have just to take a picture at this time and my picture would be good. No work to do, just click on the button and I would get a good picture. So uh, in reality, it was not that simple, but uh, I had this idea of taking a picture, but then I had the idea to do a project with it. So what I did is I, you know, I, I, I had a dream, and then I say, well, I'll find these people, and then I'll take 200 photos of lookalikes. And 200 is a big number, as you'll see. So, you know, a dream is free, so you can imagine anything, and uh, I encourage you to have any kind of ideas because they're free. It's when you want to, uh, to put them in, in, uh, in practice that <laughs> you, you get into trouble. So I wanted to have these 200 lookalikes, and then I would do a book with that so that people can look at my pictures, because being an artist, I want people to look at my work. And I would do an exhibition, but not an ordinary one, an international exhibition, you know? <laughs> If you dream, dream big, because it's the same money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> gracias. <laughs> gracias. So, before going any further in this, in this story of my project, let us look at some of the pictures that I did for the project. None of the people that you will see in the picture is related to the other. There are no brothers, there are no sisters, 
they, they're just strangers. Some of them met for the first time when they came to the studio. And when I say the studio, it could be in my hometown in Montreal, or it could be, like in this case, I was in uh, Geneva, and I, somebody lent me his place to, to do the picture, so they came to my traveling studio. And uh, you know what? Being a traveling photographer is really, really good, <laughs> because you get to see so many things and visit so many nice places. Some other people, they already knew each other, like these two women, two girls, in fact, so they, they go to the same school. That's why they're dressed the same, because that they, this the school costume. So the teachers kept telling them, you know, uh, who are you? And you must be the other one. And there was confusion all the time. And uh, it's funny, because they, they wrote me a letter to participate in the project and say, oh, they, they seem young, so I need to talk to your parents. And you know, it's, 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 you need to do that fast. So some of the people also, that if you look at the pictures, they, uh, they look the same, yes, but they're not identical. They look somewhat of the same. And that's the most interesting part. But they all share one thing in common, is that at one time, at least in their life, somebody came to them and calling them with, by the name of another person. And the name that they call the other person with is the name of the person that's besides them at this moment when you look at the pictures. For those of you in the room who come from Colombia, these are from uh, Bogota. <laughs> Some of them look pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, they look the same, but I'll be frank with you. The man on the right is bald. He has no hair, <laughs> except on the sides. And the one on the left, he has full hair. The reason I, I took the photograph with the caps on is not, the, it's not to to, you know, to, 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 to change things, because I try to photograph things as they are. But when they told me their stories, their stories is that when they met, they were doing a, a cycling tour in, uh, in Germany, and people would tell them, oh, I saw your twin brother uh, nearby. And they say, no, I don't have any twin brothers. But finally, they met during the, the tour, and they instantly became friends, but when they, were, they met, they had this, this dress on, these caps on. So that's why I photographed them with that. Some others, they are the, likely, the likeness is not as uh, obvious, like this woman. I love this picture very much, because it's the essence of my project. They kind of look the same, but they're not the same. Obviously, the hair is totally different. But some people talk to one of these, thinking it was the other, because it's the, the way of being. In French, we say la manière d'être, in Espanol, la manera de ser. That's the thing that makes a lookalike real. I have a funny story about this last picture of my collection. These two Frenchmen, they uh, used to work in a, for a Paris production company. A movie production company, and the, uh, the man on the left, uh, Marcel, he had a girlfriend, and one day she came to pick him up at the, uh, the company, and she saw Ludovic standing there, so she went to Ludovic, and she, she was about to give him a, a real kiss, in that case, a French kiss, I suppose. <laughs> but the sad story, she realized at the last minute that it was not Marcel, but Ludovic. So, you may have a question for me, and lots of people have. Say, how do you do that? How do you get these people? Uh, how do you find them? So do you walk the street and you, you just you know, uh, see someone and say, oh, you look like some, somebody I know in that other city? Or, well, I don't do that. And uh, my mother told me not to do that anyway, so I would <laughs> never do something like that. So. At the beginning of my project, I had some lookalikes that I knew, like friends and family that I would, you know, could relate. So I started the project. I did about 10 pictures, but then I was stuck with nothing. So my impossible project, my crazy project, it seemed that it proved that it was impossible and crazy. So what did I do? I had another crazy idea. I decided to go to the media. You know, so I went to the media, so, hello, media. 
I'm Francois Brunel. Everyone likes me. So would you please, by the way, help me find lookalikes? And they say, how is that? So just write an article and talk about my project and just tell your audience that I need a lookalike. Uh, so they say, Are, is this project about lookalike of famous people? I say, no, 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 it's not that. It's no, no, that, that some people do that. What I want to do is photograph lookalikes of ordinary people, ordinary people, regular people, just people like me, because that's my fascination. I'm fascinated by this, this fact that two people can look the same. So I went to the media, asked them for help, and here is what I got. Nothing. <laughs> As for a start, it's not bad. So I had to decide, you know, what do I do? And I have a few friends, and they all tell me, you know, friends want to help you, say, oh, you should do that. You should, uh, you know, uh, switch your project to something else, and you should, you know, um, adapt it to the conditions of the, you know. So I thought about it carefully, and then I look at the few pictures that I had one night, and I look at them, and I say, what is that? Black and white pictures, no makeup, uh, white backgrounds. It's, it's not very, uh, very cool, right? It's just, it's, it's just those pictures. But then I look at them and say, oh, God, I like those. That's my type of picture. Oh, that's, these are my pictures. So I decided to continue to do what I do, and I would just, I would just persevere and talk to the media like crazy until they understand my point of view. So what happened after a while is the media understood. It took about four or five years. And then I got lots of media. In fact, tons of media. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop it, stop it. Like too much media almost because people got interested into my project. And after this, all this media and with all this media, something unexpected happened to my project. Remember at first, it's me doing those photos of lookalike, black and white, and you know, wanting to share that to the world with a book and an exhibition. But then I received more than this number, 40,000 people connected to the project, wanting to participate. Either they add their lookalikes, and a few of them, they want to have their lookalike, and I, I keep receiving, even this morning, I received a letter, for, I didn't read it, but some, some lady somewhere and it says, oh, please, Mr. Brunel, I saw your project. Find my lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> the idea behind my project, too, was to, to show my pictures to people you know, as an artist. And the consequence of this media and my research and my perseverance was that up to now, at more than 100 million people have been looking at my work. And just for that, I could just stop doing it right now and, you know, take a rest and I would be happy because I can't ask for more. But you always want more, right? So I want to finish my project. And before, before leaving you with uh, this, this last image, my, I just want to remind you what is my project exactly. My project is very simple. It's a very simple idea is to, to find people, two people that look the same, put them together in my studio, in front of my camera, and then try to communicate with them. Because these people, at first, I thought they would be just you know, people who come into my studio, take the photo, and you know, out you go, and bye. But what happened is they, they're not paid to, do, to, to participate. So they, they, they become friends, and they become participants in the project. So I'm doing these photos, and if you like them, I'm very good at that, but these people, they do half of the, the picture, so I guess I do half, and each of them do 25%, so it's fair. So they do the picture, and, and for that, I have to thank them very much, because if you like those pictures, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot because of their participation. Now, I want to finish by telling you one thing that I learned through this project, and the theme of this TED Talk is impossible. The project that I, I did was kind of impossible, but it's becoming possible and it's not finished. And it's becoming possible because I just decided to do this thing in which I believed in with all my heart. And I just thought that if nobody else loves my pictures, 
that's fine. But I thought at least one person in the world would like my photos. If one other person likes my pictures as much as I do, I'll be satisfied. So what a big surprise. So let me finish in telling you, if you have a project, if you have an ID, study your ID, be, put your heart in your ID, and then put it into action, and, and stick to your guns, and go for it. Thank you.